know, mine, we'll go ahead and get started and get things rolling. I uh, want to thank you for coming and being here for the August uh, Board of Commissioners meeting. Uh, like it's called the order. If, if you would join me, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. West Fry with our planning and development office if you would lead us in an invocation prayer, please. Yes. If you would, pray with me. Good and gracious God Almighty, we ask for your presence here and your blessings tonight. We ask for your guidance so we can be informed and productive. Let us really listen to what's brought before us tonight. Let us uh, be ready to be effective in decision. We pray for the safety of our county, our families, our children, and all that are here. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. If you would remain standing, Paul, would you mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As we move through, um, amendments to the agenda, the only thing that I see, and, and you guys can look over and look up you see other, is we do have the, the standard for an executive session, but I don't see a need for that unless you do. If uh, y'all are comfortable, if I could have a move to amend our agenda to remove that from it. So, so move. Second. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we will amend the agenda by removing the executive session and the approval of the executive session. Uh, any other amendments that either of you see that need to be made? All right. The consent agenda, I don't have any items under the consent agenda. Ms. Lisa, do you have anything that we need to add? No, sir. All right, old business, the same. I, I don't see any old business to attend to. We'll move right through that. Under new business, it doesn't require action, but wanted to make you guys aware. Uh, we received a request from the city of Jasper that they are going to, uh, wanting to move to annex a, a parcel of property. This parcel, they've got it listed as their Jasper parcel, JA10052. It's a 3.85 acre parcel. It sits on the corner of uh, East Church Street and Noah. Uh, the property's owned by Mr. Bob Wigginton. So they're gonna move forward during their next meeting with the annexation process. Our planning and development office took a look at it. I know that there was on, on several of the sides was county, but the other side was city. So it was under a spoke annexation that it does uh, have a, a bordering side there as well. So it doesn't create an island on its own. So they're going to be moving forward with that during their September council meeting. So just wanted to, to make you guys aware. Is that coming right across from the bank? Yeah, directly across from Community Bank. It's got a, a for sale sign on it. Yeah. Right and there on the corner. It's not in the city. It's not. It's been counting uh, the whole time it's sat vacant. So uh, what's surprising is the property on both sides of it. On, if you go I guess if you go east on one side and go north on the other side, they're in the county as well. So but then it connects to everything that's owned by the city behind there and then across the street is city as well. So uh, we've got that just to, to go through. Um, next item on our agenda is our finance report. I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Charlene Bunch. If you Okay, you have in front of you the July 2021 financial report. It reflects seven months of the 2021 fiscal year. Um, the expenditure budget should be not to exceed 58%. As you can see in your packet, we have the general fund revenue from July 2021. Last fiscal year, we were at we received 10.7 million, which um, this year we have received 13 million 055 714, and that's 44% of 44.76% of the revenue budget. You can see on the next page we have the actual countywide total expenditures. Last fiscal year, it went, we were at 17.2 million. 
this year we are at 15.5 million which is 53.4 percent of the budget on the next page you have your general um, governmental expenditures to date we have spent 2.178,268,000 uh, 53.17 of the budget on the next page in your packet you have the judicial expenditures we've spent 2,069,902 which is 52.58 percent of the budget public and safety expenditures to date we have spent eight million two hundred and one thousand seven hundred and forty one which is fifty five per fifty five point oh six percent of the budget on the next page you have your public work expenditures to date we have spent one million nine hundred thirty eight thousand two hundred and thirty one which is 41.01% of your budget. On the next page, we have health and welfare expenditures. We have spent 64,334, which is 22.43% of the budget. Culture and recreation expenditures, which is on the next page on your packet. We spent 670265 which is 59.27 of the budget. On the next page, you have housing and development expenditures. To date, we have spent 429533 which is 48.14% of the budget. And in the next page in your packet, you have enterprise funds and expenditures. To date, we've spent $1,965,714, which is 56.58% of the budget. The aligned budget reports were sent out to the department <coughs> um, on July 17th of 2021. And if you'd like to see those, I actually have those as well. Um, a couple of notes as you were going through that. I know when on the Parks and Recreation, we had made an adjustment with uh, some of the, the funds that came in from the American Rescue Plan to open the pool free of charge so that it can receive revenue. We haven't made that line item adjustment yet, so when you see that their percentage was off by just a little bit, the pool's kind of threw that off just a tiny bit. That'll regulate next month once we once we make that adjustment on there. Um, and so that should level level that back out. I think the other one that was a little bit out of line from where it was just by a couple percent was under EMA. Um, when Mr. Nicholson retired, he had his uh, payout for all of his uh, vacation time. Yeah. So it'll level out over the course of the next couple months. There was just some expenses that came out during that, that particular time. So just to help with documentation. Do y'all have any questions with, with showing with the finance report? Thank you very much. All right, so under our action items, we do have in your packet the minutes for the last three meetings. We had a regular meeting on July the 15th. Uh, we had a work session on August the 5th and then a call meeting on August the 5th. I believe those were sent to you via email um, by Ms. Thompson, but then they're also in the packet as well if you've had a chance to, to look over those. If so, if I could have a move to approve the minutes for these past meetings. Mm -hmm. Second. All right. Any further discussion on those? All in favor? Mm -hmm. All right. The next item on the agenda is authorization to execute an agreement governing expenditures for state and local government costs. Um, that's a fancy way of saying that we do have a contract resolution that we need for a grant that's coming from the EPD, uh, the Environmental Protection Division. 
this is a project that Justin Kilgore has been working on from for the past mm -hmm. several months together. Um, the contract basically shows that the total sum of $157,000 uh, $37.61 uh, would be reimbursable to us for expenses that we've already had. So this gives us the opportunity. What we were looking to, to try to do is just to get a resolution in place authorizing me to sign the agreement with them in order to be able to receive those funds. Um, and it's all the work's already been done. So if I could have a move to authorize that signature. Second. Any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. The next is uh, one that I'm excited to know in our last month we appointed an interim EMA director because GEMA does require that we constantly have uh, somebody functioning in the EMA role. So Philip Dean with the Water Department had stepped up to act as an EMA director. Uh, we've been doing a search for several, several months, uh, spoke with several candidates. We were able to make the selection of Mr. Mark Harris. Mark's joined our team starting this past Monday. Mark, if you would just join us for a second. Mark came with, uh, it, it, and I don't have his resume here with me, but there was four pages that had to have been about nine font single space of all the training and, and education. He's certified in all aspects of emergency management. He came in on Monday and was able to deter a tropical storm that was coming straight to us and pushed it to the east. <laughs> so, he's already earned his job. Uh, but one thing that is required, that GEMA does require, is that we do have a formal uh, resolution that we did uh, appoint an EMA director. He'll be working directly under uh, the Director of Public Safety, Mr. Elrod, so he'll be working directly with with Sloan uh, there, but Mark, we want to first say thank you for joining the team. We're looking forward to working with you um, and, and have heard nothing but great things. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I could get a motion authorizing the signature of a letter to GEMA that uh, announces Mr. Mr. Harris as our EMA director. So second. second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you get that sent to them and make them happy. Uh, next item on the agenda is the overtime policy for emergency call-outs during holiday pay periods. We discussed this during our last work session uh, two weeks ago. Basically, it is just making an addition to our existing policy on overtime. Uh, the, the previous policy, which was set by, by the, the Federal Fair Labor and Standards Act, basically stated that it was only in a week that are in a pay period where you worked a 40-hour work week were you eligible to receive overtime if you worked beyond that anytime there was a holiday they didn't technically work the hours that were considered holidays but then still got called out at night so the proposed addition to the policy is just an exception that says with the following exception personnel that are not scheduled to work the holiday or when the county offices are closed due to inclement weather or emergency closing and are called in for an emergency by their director after their normal work hours. Their overtime calculation shall not be affected by the holiday or closing county offices due to inclement weather emergency closing. So um, simply to place that statement so that, for instance, this past Christmas holiday where several in the road department got called out to clear roads and there was 16 hours of, of holiday, um, they just had straight time for that entire period. So this would give us a correction and, and be able to work, I think, that Speaking with, with HR and with, with payroll, they, they've been working through how to, to coordinate that, and we're going to rely heavy on the directors to be able to monitor and make sure that it's for emergencies. But if I can have a, a move to um, to add that addition to our personnel handbook. Sure. Um, Second. Any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. All right, motion carries. So the next is our rezones. We did have quite a few this time. There's two uh, planning and development meetings worth of rezones that all kind of merged together because of the way that the advertising schedule fell. So we're going to go through a, a series of, I think there's eight on here. Um, so if you'll bear with me, we'll go through them one at a time and, and bring those up. <laughs> the first one is a request for change in land use classification for parcel 016021. Big Ridge Road uh, in Falcon Rock, now known as Parcel 016 
the Planning and Development Office received a completed application from Mr. Charles Matthews on behalf of RLF Talking Rock LLC requesting a change in the land use classification of agricultural to suburban residential on a 16.7 acre tract located on Big Ridge Road. The intended purpose of the rezone request was to combine with another lot that is currently zoned suburban residential and to sell as two separate parcels. The public hearing was conducted on July the 12th uh, regarding the application in before the Pickens County Planning Commission after reviewing the application and receiving the staff report to be denied it was uh, as it did not meet the comprehensive plan recommendations for the area. The Pickens County Planning Commission voted six yes to zero no to deny the rezone on the 16.7 acre track on this um, parcel. Do I have a move to accept the recommendation from our planning commission to deny this rezone request? Sure. Second. I have a question. That looks like six million two approve it. It's six voted yes to deny. So yes the, to the deny. motion was made to deny <laughs> and it was all six in favor of denial. Thank you. Yeah. I second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, all right. So Next item on the rezones is rezone 190131. It's from Mr. Jeb Chatham on behalf of Harley Hogue and Monique Lopez Wilcox. Um, the Planning and Development Office received an application on May the 11th requesting a change in the land classification from agricultural to a state residential on a 13.7 acre, 76 acre parcel track located on Tatum Road. Intended purpose, if approved, was to split off 3.76 acres uh, for the co-owner of the property to build a single family residence. A public hearing was held on July the 12th and after a recommendation from the planning staff for approval, the Pickens County Planning Commission voted six yes, zero no to approve the rezone request. Do I have a move to accept their recommendation on approving this rezone? Second. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. Motion carries. So our third is rezone 190141 Miss Cindy Petty for property on Four Mile Church Road. The Planning Commission received a completed application on May 27th from Miss Cindy Petty requesting a change from agricultural to rural residential on a 3.01 acre tract located at 1681 Four Mile Church Road. Intended purpose, if approved, is to split the parcel up for future sale. A uh, public hearing was held on July the 12th regarding the application. The Planning Commission, after reviewing the application and receiving the staff report to be approved, the Planning, County, Planning Commission voted four yes, zero no to approve the rezone request on the 3.01 acre tract uh, on parcel 0680820006. Do I have a move to accept the recommendation from the Planning Commission? On this as well. So moved. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. So the next rezone request is rezone 190148 from Marcel Bozeman. Um, address on the property is. 1531 Four Mile Church Road in Ballground. Uh, Planning and Development Office received a completed application on June the 6th from Marcel Bozeman requesting a change from agricultural to rural residential on a four acre tract located at 1531 Four Mile Church Road. Uh, the intended purpose of the rezone request was to split the parcel up for future sale. A public hearing was held on the 9th of August regarding the application and 
After reviewing the application and receiving the staff report to be approved, the Pickens County Planning Commission voted five yes, zero no to approve the reloan request for parcel 0680820004. Do I have a move to accept the recommendation from the Planning Commission to approve? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay. Next uh, rezone request is rezone 190152 from Mr. Bruce Johnson on Highway 53. The Planning Commission received a completed application on June the 24th from Susan Bozeman. Susan Bozeman's next. That's what I was looking for. Okay, I apologize. I, I'm jumping ahead on one there. So this one's on rezone 190152. Zero from Susan Bozeman on Four Mile Church Road in Ballground from agricultural to rural residential. I'll let the last name confuse me on the, the one before. Uh, it's for parcel 068082. Uh, the Pickens County Planning and Development Office received a completed application on June the 24th from Susan Bozeman requesting a change from agricultural to rural residential on the 14.79 acre track on Four Mile Church Road. The intended purpose was to split the parcel up public hearing was held on August the 9th and following the application and receiving a staff report to be approved the Pickens County Planning Commission voted five yes zero no to approve the rezone request uh, type map parcel 068082 I have a motion to accept their recommendation to approve this rezone request Second. any further discussion all in favor Aye. So now to the one I was trying to do before is uh, rezone 190152 from Bruce Johnson on Highway 53 East in Marble Hill, Georgia. Uh, Pickens County Planning and Development Office received an application on June the 25th from Bruce Johnson requesting a change in land use classification from agricultural to rural residential on a five-acre five track uh, located on Highway 53 East. Intended purpose is to put a single-family residence on the property. Public hearing was conducted on the 9th of August and following a recommendation from staff to be approved, the Pickens County Planning Commission voted 5 yes, 0 no to approve the rezone request on the five-acre track contained on tax parcel 049085001. Do I have a move to accept the recommendation from the Planning Commission to rezone this property? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any further discussion? All right. Next one is rezone request 190153 from Affordable Investments. The Pickens County Planning and Development Office received completed application on June the 25th from Affordable Investments, LLC, requesting a change in the land use from rural residential to suburban residential on a 2.35 acre track located at 150 Ludville Road in Ranger, Georgia. The intended purpose, if approved, was to split the property with the intent to sell the two existing single family homes on the property. Public hearing was conducted on the 9th of August regarding the application and following a staff report to be approved, the Pickens County Planning Commission voted five yes, zero no to approve the rezone request of the 2.35 acre track on tax map parcel 034063. Do I have a move to accept the recommendation from the Planning Commission to approve this as well? So moved. Move in a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. So our last rezone request for the night is rezone 21190149 from Kevin Cohn from Hamrick Road. Pickens County Planning and Development Office received a completed application on June the 9th requesting a change from rural residential to agricultural on a 23.287 acre tract on Hamrick Road. Intended purpose of the request was to build a single-family residence and horse farm on the property. Public hearing was held on August the 9th and following a recommendation for approval from the staff of the planning office, the Pickens County Planning Commission voted 5 yes, 0 no 
to approve the rezone request on the 23.287 acre tract on tax par parcel 0380120008. Do I have a move to accept the recommendation from the Planning Commission to approve this rezone? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right, so the next item on our list is guest comments. We'd love to welcome any comments that anyone may have. White crowd, ready to go home. So, uh, any board comments that you guys would like to make? Oh, we? All right. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. It is six twenty-six. I do. I have a move to adjourn. Second. All right. Thank you very much for coming.